Today is September 9th, 2015, Apple Announcement Day, and as Tim Cook took the stage at today's event, he used the term monster announcements. Let's get into that on this episode of Geek with Glass. <laughs> So let's jump right into this. I've got my iPad with all of my notes. I'm primarily going to just relay the information that was announced during the two hour press event uh, that just concluded out in San Francisco. I might throw a few opinions in there, but let's jump in. So the first thing that was talked about at today's show was Apple Watch. And there wasn't a lot um, specifically to be announced. We all knew and we were all expecting OS 2 to be coming out. OS 2 is going to be available for general public on September 16th, which is next week. Um, they are actually partnered with Hermes. I believe it's Hermes. I might have gotten that wrong. Hermes. And they are going to be releasing some specific watch bands by the Hermes manufacturer and that have specific custom watch faces if you buy one of those Hermes bands. Um, and those will be available in October. Alongside with the Hermes partnership, uh, Apple is going to be releasing new bands and new watch bodies as well. So you're now going to be able to get the watch body in the gold and rose gold, but in aluminum, starting at the same price point as the space gray and the silver aluminums that they already have. And they're also releasing a fall collection of their sport bands. So there's gonna be some less pastel-y and more you know, dulled down colors. And they showed quite a few, it looked like about six or seven um, in a red tone and six or seven in just other colors. So probably a good 14 or so new sport um, sport bands that are going to be available. And to be honest with you, on this opinion, I wish that I would have known this a month ago because I bought my wife the watch and she loves the rose gold, but I wasn't going to pay $10,000 for a rose gold. Um, so uh, she could have got an aluminum for the same price. That's a bummer. Um, iPad was the next up on the announcement, the brand new, much rumored and much talked about iPad Pro. So it is a 12.9 inch display that sports a 2732 by 2048 resolution, which is 5.6 uh, million pixels. It'll be running the A9X 64-bit processor, which uh, sports two times the memory bandwidth and two times the storage performance of the 88X, which is the outgoing. A total of 1.8 faster than the 88X um, when it comes to CPU type stuff and 2X performance for your GPU or your graphics processes than the 8X. 10 hour battery, li uh, battery life, it's going to have a quad speaker system. So if you're holding, you have four physical speakers on the iPad Pro. Cool part, which I thought it was interesting, is it'll auto balance depending on how you tilt or move the iPad, which is cool. So you'll always have equal audio coming out of whatever side of the iPad that you have, no matter how you're tilting it. So that's, that's actually kind of a cool little feature in my opinion. Um, it is going to be 6.9 millimeters thick and weigh 1.57 pounds. Uh, there will also be a new physical keyboard that is going to connect, it's called a smart keyboard that is going to connect by the smart connector. Three little dots in the very center down at the bottom, very much like you see with uh, your Microsoft tablets. Um, the new keyboard does use the Apple Dome switch keys, which are exactly what you find on the laptop series. Um, uh, so you're gonna have the same touch and feel with that rubber keyboard and they are also premiering what they are calling the Apple Pencil. The Apple Pencil, it's a stylus, but it's appled up. So it has force capabilities, tilt capabilities, and position capabilities with the new iPad Pro um, and the new display that the iPad uh, Pro offers. The um, the Apple Pencil also will have a lightning connector to charge it. You're supposed to get if I remember, it was like two or three months out of charge, but you, you pull off what would be the eraser and you plug it into your iPad and it charges it um, right off of the iPad. So the new iPad Pro is going to cost $799 for a 32 gig model, $949 for a 128 gig model, and $1,079 for a 128 gig with Wi-Fi model. The pen will cost you $99. The keyboard will cost you $149. They'll all be available in November. And the iPad mini 4, which was also announced, and it didn't say much about it at all, uh, is going to be $399 at its starting point. And I believe that's essentially the iPad Air um, I think it, he said the iPad Air 2, maybe it's the iPad Air miniaturized into the small format. I'm interested in that being that this is my original iPad Air uh, because my iPad Air 2 got lost on an airplane. 
So moving along, the next feature or the next uh, device that they talked about was the all new Apple TV. Of all of the announcements, I think I'm most excited for this one. It looks really sweet. So it now has a touch service remote with five buttons on there. I can't remember all the buttons. There's a volume rocker, there's a Siri button, there's a menu button, and I think it looked like an AirPlay button. I'm not exactly sure. Um, Siri, they're, they're calling it a Siri remote. Um, Siri will allow searching across all of the apps on your device for content. So let's say the example that they showed was they wanted to see a specific actor in a specific show that was available on Hulu. So they said, show me the episode of TV show X with actor X, and it brought that episode up forefront. All you had to do is hit click to play. The cool part is you can use Siri now to define your searches down to a granular level. So you can use Siri to say, I would like to watch, the example they used was James Bond, I would like to watch all James Bond movies, I'd like to see a listing of all James Bond movies with Sean Connery in it. And it listed those out and you just hit play. So the cool part is, if you say something like that, it'll show all of the um, apps that would show you Sean Connery movies, not just iTunes, but Netflix or HBO or Showtime. Those are the ones that are starting with, as well as Hulu. And then they're gonna advance that as new apps come out with the new announced app store. So they are now, uh, they're upgrading the OS on the Apple TV to what is called TV OS, and that will give us access to apps, just like you have on your iPads, your iPhones. Um, app switching via Siri. So as you're watching a TV show, so let's say you're watching something from iTunes or you're watching the Showtime app and you're catching up on a TV show. Um, let's say there's a thunderstorm outside. You want to know what's going on. You can use your, you can lift up your remote and say, Hey Siri, show me the weather. You get a lower third down at the bottom of the display that'll show you the current weather. You can swipe up on the remote to pause your video and bring up the full weather app, which has been optimized for the Apple TV. You can swipe down to go back to your TV show. You can use the scrubber on the, um, on the remote to scrub through the video as well as, as you're watching a show if you want to skip forward. The other cool por, uh, part is you could say, hey Siri, skip ahead five minutes and it automatically jumps five minutes ahead of whatever video you're watching. And I think that's, that's really cool. It's uh, pretty sweet. They showed off a couple of apps and most importantly, they showed gaming. This is the thing that I was looking forward to, but they kind of took it up a notch. I wasn't expecting to see what I saw. What I mean by that is the, the new remote has an accelerometer and a gyroscope in the remote. And it's a little bit bigger than the ones that we currently have. It's a little bit wider and that's understandable. But they were showing games where you were using it like a Wiimote, where he was playing like a baseball game and swinging around and he was using the remote. Let's say my knife is the remote. And as he was tilting it, he was driving a car, which I thought was really sweet. It's gonna bring that, you know, not hardcore gaming, but that, you know, kind of couch gaming forefront to the Apple TV and make it easy. And as you know, because of the App Store, there's gonna be gazillions of these games available. And I think that's that's really exciting for just quick brain dump. You just wanna sit down and play something really quickly with your Apple remote on your Apple TV. Um, and one of the other things that I thought was really interesting is um, they, uh, I'm calling it a handoff feature, but essentially let's say I'm on a commute. Let's say I'm sitting on a, on a train and I'm playing a game on my iPhone. I can be playing that game and let's say I get home and the kids are watching something on TV, I wanna play it on a bigger experience, so I grab my iPad. I can pick up where I left off on that game on my iPad, and then let's say the kids go to bed and I wanna finish that game on my TV, I can go over to the Apple TV, grab the remote, and continue the game where I left it off in each stage. So I'm calling it handoff for games. That might be what they call it because it's very similar to the handoff, start something on your iPad, go to your iPhone, so on and so forth. I think that's also very cool. Um, a little bit about the hardware, it's a 64-bit A8 processor. It's gonna be using Bluetooth 4.0. The remote now communicates via Bluetooth, so you no longer have to make sure you got line of sight of your Apple TV, which is a problem for me, and I'm looking forward to that, that's awesome. Lightning cable adapter on the bottom of the remote, so you'll be able to charge your remote, and they said it was a three-month charge on that remote, but you'll be able to plug it in uh, using a lightning cable and a lightning adapter. They're gonna sell two different models, a 32 gigabyte version with 32 gigs of internal storage for 149, that's me. They're gonna sell the 64 gig, uh, gigabyte version as well for 199, and those are gonna be available late next month, so late October, so I know what I'm getting in my trick-or-treat bag. Um, and then next up is obviously the new iteration of the iPhone. So we're going to get the rose gold aluminum, um, that we're gonna see the exact same thing in the rose gold aluminum Apple Watch. Uh, 6S, 6S, 6S Plus, so they're following the naming convention that they've had from the get-go. They're not switching it up even though there's all kinds of new stuff. 
All of the new iPhones 6S and 6S Pluses are going to be made with the new 7000 series aluminum, which is the same aluminum that I have on my Apple Watch Sport. Um, and they, uh, let's see, where are we at here? New glass, they're using the same type of glass on the face of the new iPhones as what is on the Apple Watch Sport. It's some ion phase, blah, blah, blah. Phil Schiller was very cryptic when he talked about that because I, I don't think he really understands it. It's just harder. I don't know if it's quite as good as Gorilla Glass, but some of the videos that I've seen of the glass on here is pretty hard to scratch it. So it's gonna be pretty dang durable. Um, 3D Touch is what they're calling Force Touch. So we call it Force Touch on the Apple Watch. Hopefully they'll rebrand that and they'll call it 3D Touch on the Apple Watch as well. But they are going to now have 3D Touch on the phone, so we're gonna see that same pressure sensitivity on the iPhones. Um, a new, uh, with this new pressure sensitivity is adding two additional gestures that they're calling peak and pop. So a light press, you'll be able to peek into an app, a hard press, you'll be able to dive into that app, which is kind of cool, or additional features from the home screen. They showed light press on the map, you can drop a pin, force press, you can tell it to give you directions somewhere or, or something to that effect, which is, so the new force touch on the phone is gonna be really cool and I'm looking forward to playing with that and getting used to having additional gestures and functionality on the phone. Uh, they've developed a new taptic feedback system, they described it, it was kind of cool. They are running the brand new A9 chip, so some specs, 70% faster with CPU cycles and 90% faster with GPU cycles. That's insane. I mean, they're 90% faster graphics on the new iPhone. That's just crazy. The M9 coprocessor, which is a separate chip in the existing 6 and 6 Plus, is now built into that A9, uh, A9 processor, which gives it always on capabilities. Pick up the phone, say, I, uh, hey Siri, you don't have to press the button. All of your... Um, uh, uh, health information and your, your co-processing, your walking and all that, always on. It doesn't require the phone to begin moving. It's always on. Uh, we'll see how that affects battery life. Second generation I t uh, the I uh, ID touch. Um, so they're claiming it's twice as fast to read your fingerprint and log you into your phone. Um, Camera upgrade, we all expected this. It's been a rumor forever. 12 megapixel upgrade, 50% more pixels in the camera, and more importantly, in my opinion, 50% more focus pixels, which is gonna give us twice as fast autofocus uh, taking photos, which I think is really crazy cool. Um, 4K video update, again, been rumored forever, so we now can shoot 4K video on our phones. I feel sorry for anybody with a 16 gig phone, like what I'll end up getting five megapixel FaceTime camera. So they only upgraded this to a five megapixel, but it's a huge jump over the three megapixel that they already had. And they're going to be using the LED display as a true tone flash forward facing, like the rumors. No flash at the top, but it'll, it'll use the display. And the cool part is, it'll actually brighten the display three times as bright as the brightest setting to use that flash depending on the sense, uh, the sensor and, and how far you are away. And it is true tone, so it's gonna do the same as the back where it's gonna sense your ambient lighting and match that ambient lighting so you don't get these ghost photos, which I think is pretty cool. Um, live photos is a new functionality with the phone, capable with the new processor, but I think it's more of a software gig where um, you can take a photo and uh, the live sensor will have a little ID at the, a live photo will have a little ID at the top. And what it does is it captures a few seconds before the photo is captured via the viewfinder. It's taking pictures and a few afterwards. They're claiming it's not gonna use a lot of storage. I'll be very curious as to tell the difference between the storage on the device. But what it does is it allows you to actually bring your photos to life with sound. So you can use your force touch and you can see a photo. Like I could take a photo of me standing in front of the camera, but if I pressed it, it would actually show me move around and it's not using video. They're claiming that it's actually taking high res photos to create these new live photos, which are viewable on your iPad and your Apple uh, computer systems. Uh, we'll see whether or not it's available on the Apple TV. Uh, let's see, what else? Extends capture time, just mentioned that. Uh, LTE has been updated, so it's running two times faster LTE and 23 bands of LTE. We're now two times as fast on the Wi-Fi, up to 866 megabits per second for the Wi-Fi, which is great if you got those ACs, those new AC adapt uh, routers, you're gonna be able to get blazing fast speeds on these devices. Um, Apple is also releasing, and I thought this was kind of funny, Apple is releasing an app on the Android Play Store that will help you migrate from Android to Apple if you wanna switch phones, which is pretty cool. Um, we'll see whether or not that's used a lot. Uh, new docks are being released, new leather covers are being released, and new silicone covers, a myriad uh, of new col uh, colors. I believe it's like five and five, I'm not exactly sure. Pre-order September 12th, that's this Saturday. Um, on sale in stores September 25th, 
So you'll be able to go get in line on September 24th or September 23rd or September 22nd if you're in New York City. Um, iOS 9, which is the new update, will be available on the 16th next week. And Apple also released a new um, Apple phone or iPhone trade-in program for $32 a month. You can pick either of the phones, the 6 or the 6 Plus. I think it's either of the phones. They didn't denote that. I'm assuming it's either phone. On any of your carriers, on a two-year contract, you trade in your old phone, you pay $32 a month to Apple, and you get whatever phone you want, and then you put it on your carrier. It's an unlocked phone. It's a two-year contract, but you can still upgrade every single year. So I'm assuming if you decide to go away from Apple and go to Android, you then have to pay that difference when you cancel that contract. Um, and then the pricing and availability is going to be exactly the same as the iPhone 6. I will have that in the notes below. It was way too much information, way too quickly to type, and I wanted to get this video shot as quick as possible while Apple's updating their web page. So I'll have all the pricing information in the comment section below. Um, and that's it for the September Apple event. It's not even the iPhone event anymore. I mean, they announced so many really cool things. So. Tell me what you think. Leave me some feedback. Are you excited about the new Apple TV? Are you excited about the iPad Pro? Are you excited about the new phone? I definitely am pumped about the new Apple TV. We use Apple TV all the time, and I'm really looking forward to that. Um, iPad Pro would be great if I didn't use a, uh, a laptop as my primary computer. If I had a Mac Pro for editing, I wouldn't even have a laptop. I would just have an iPad Pro. Um, that's the way I would do it if I, if I had enough money to, to make that come to reality, but that's not going to happen anytime soon. And then the iPhone. I think what they're doing with the new gesture capabilities and the speed and boost and performance is awesome. And with this new camera, I mean, it's 12 megapixel finally. We're kind of catching up with other smartphones, but you don't need to carry a camera anymore. This thing is doing amazing things, and the front-facing camera is getting a heck of a lot better. So let me know what you think about uh, all of the announcements today. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comment section below. I'm looking forward to getting your feedback. As always, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, uh, give us a thumbs up if you like this content, give us a thumbs down if you didn't like our content, and uh, let me know what you think. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot, and have a gate. Uh, have a gate. Have a great day. Gate, was that a Freudian slip of Bill Gates? Anyways, bye-bye.